This patient had a CT scan of the abdomen pelvis performed after two years on imatinib therapy and was determined to have peritoneal implants and a new liver lesion. At this point in time, the patient still had a reasonable quality of life, was able to perform his activities of daily living other than really strenuous activity. The determination was made to initiate the patient on sunitinib 37.5 milligram continuous daily dosing. This patient was initiated on 37.5 milligrams of sunitinib orally continuously daily dosing after progression on imatinib. Although the initial studies of sunitinib in metastatic gastrointestinal stromal tumor involved 50 milligram dose of sunitinib four weeks on, two weeks off, subsequent studies support the use of 37.5 milligrams daily. This is better tolerated in patients and pharmacokinetically appears to be similar to the 50 milligram dose. Additionally, patients do not have that two weeks off where the patients are drug free and the tumors can flare. This patient, after initiation of sunitinib, should be monitored by CT scan of the abdomen pelvis, chest x-ray, and laboratory testing to include a CBC, a chemistry, and a magnesium. Additionally, we perform a thyroid stimulating hormone test generally every three months to detect hypothyroidism at an early stage. Patients with GIST often have anemia. Patients with GIST take kinase inhibitors like sunitinib, and these can all cause severe fatigue. And so we try to address the fatigue by managing the hypothyroidism that might be due to sunitinib, as well as managing the anemia with a thorough workup of etiology, including iron deficiency, B12 deficiency, folate deficiency, and supplementation of any of these if they are low. If this patient continues to have fatigue, we may refer the patient to our fatigue clinic. When a patient's tumor becomes resistant to imatinib therapy, this may be due to a situation called secondary resistance. This situation is due to the selection of a resistant clone that has a mutation in a different site from the initial kit mutation. The initial kit mutation might be exon 9, exon 11, exon 13, but then after selection on imatinib, this resistant clone emerges due to a new mutation, typically in exon 13 or in exon 17 of the same kit allele. This is an important mechanism of resistance because these mutations, these secondary mutations, are at sites where imatinib binds. In the presence of this mutation, imatinib is not able to bind effectively to the kit protein and inhibit it, Thus, the patient becomes resistant to imatinib. Some of these mutations, for instance, exon 13 secondary mutations, seem to be more sensitive to sunitinib. So in this case, using sunitinib, 37.5 milligram continuous daily dosing is a reasonable second-line therapy and would be recommended.